I am 456 years old, a demon, a prophet of the Satanists, and at least 15% of Turkey will become Satanist. These, among other things, were what F.A. Zabani claimed while led a group of Satanists and became an internet sensation. He became so popular that he would debate Muslims on behalf of Satanists, challenging some of the teachings of Islam. He claimed he could read the mind too, and his job was to convince people to follow his path. 6 Haziran 2024'te Türkiye'nin 115'i satanist olacak. 3 sene önce rüyamda gördüm bunu. Efendi yardımcısının yardımcısıyla beni bu, bunu bana belirtti. İnsani bedendeyim şu an. İnsan değilim aslında. 2 tane cinim var benim. 6-2-24'te his appearance would easily lead some people to have some conclusions about him, and in the past, they would be right. Pink hair, multiple piercings on the face, and some immodest choice of clothes was the normal appearance of Efe Zabani. What many didn't know was, Efe was a boy filled with too many questions, and too few people cared to answer them. It was easy to write him off, based in appearance and demeanor. In cases where he had the opportunity to debate any Muslim, he always came up with well-prepared questions and evidence to back them up until his last podcast appearance. Efe first appeared on the Turkish podcast, Underground, about three months ago, where he made the claims previously stated. Three months later, the host of the channel invited Efe again. This time, get his questions answered by a person well-versed in Islamic knowledge. The host also revealed he had been in constant communication with Efe since his last appearance. What happened in the podcast? Did Efe find the truth he sorely sought? Did he become a Muslim? And how did it happen? Watch this video till the end to find out. As usual, Efe came with an arsenal full of questions and scriptures to quote to back up his claim. He started his barrage of questions, which includes cliches like violence against women, violence against non-Muslims, restrictions, how is Allah behind the good of the world when evil also happens? Does he cause those too? These and many more were the questions he was seeking answers to. From his behavior and choice of words, it was easy to conclude that, while he may appear antagonistic, he was willing to submit if he finds answers. He said more than once, convince me, maybe I will believe. İslam dini gerçek bir din olduğuna kanıtlasak sana. Bu sefer diyecek misin ben bu zamana kadar boşa yaşamışım? Kanıtlayamazsınız ki bunu bana. Niçin kanıtlayamayalım? Kanıtlayın o zaman konuşalım. Tamam, bunu konuşacağız. In the course of the interview, I admitted he once prayed before and he felt peace when he did that. In fact, he was a Muslim as a child. To encourage him, the hosts encouraged him that his questions are not out of place and he should ask more questions in his quest for answers. This he can do while studying Islam. Efe Zimani revealed his excitement at the opportunity to visit the Kaaba. Noting that he could not do that in his current state and appearance, he wondered if he would experience peace there like he had imagined. His host promised to take him to the Kaaba if he promises to become a Muslim. There he reiterated that he would love to become a Muslim if his questions are convincingly answered. After thinking about it for a few minutes, Efe finally decided to become a Muslim and take the Shahada on air. <laughs> He went further to observe prayer with a group. In concluding the video, the host promised that Efe would be circling the Kaaba by the time the video is released. And this I can confirm to be true as Efe posted videos of himself in Mecca a few days ago. MashaAllah. Efe was the face of so many impressionable youths 
who are continuously seeking unchecked freedom to act and appear as they like with some, like Efe, are taking it a notch higher by subscribing to Satanism and the worshipping of things they have no idea about. He was very popular online. While wondering what his followers would think, he was assured that should not be his concern, but the opportunity to save his soul should be his most important task. He didn't set out to become a Muslim until he appeared on the podcast, and the clarity he got from his first and second appearance was enough to convince him that he had been lost for so long, and he gladly found his way back to Allah. Afay's conversion could be the catalyst a lot of youths who have chosen the same path as him need to retrace their steps and find Allah like he did. Nature abhors a vacuum, and the vacuum created by those who deviated from Islam could easily be filled by preachings like the one F.A. did before accepting Islam. This is further amplified by the use of social media. We are glad that Brother F.A. has been saved, and we pray for others like him to see the light like he did and follow his footsteps.